Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great day. Man, it feels like we are crawling our way to the Steam Deck's fourth quarter release, but lucky for us, the developers that have gotten their hands on time with their dev kits, they've been able to leak some of their performance numbers, and to be honest, it's been kind of promising. However, there's one question that keeps popping up over there, and that is, how well will the Steam Deck perform when in docked mode? Well, we've gotten confirmation from the Steam Deck developers that there will be, in fact, no performance boosting when it comes to docked mode, and gosh, that is a huge buzzkill. So how will this lower spec graphic solution be able to drive some of those higher resolution panels like a 1080p or even a 4K display? Well, guys, rather than speculate quite a bit, let's just get it working. Now I've covered the Steam Deck's performance quite a bit here on the channel, and in case y'all are curious how I got to the type of setup I've got, hit the pause button and check out the playlist up at the top right, because I've done a deep dive when it comes to the technical specifications of the deck. I've even tested the performance difference when it comes to both Windows and Linux when running on our deck. And then I've also shown you guys the performance on my top 10 list of the games I'm expecting with the Steam Deck. So I've talked about it at length and rather than echo myself, definitely hit pause, check out the playlist. You're not gonna regret it. But back to the topic at hand, how will the Steam Deck perform when in docked mode? Well, I went ahead and started from a clean slate and I went ahead and reinstalled Manjaro and I'm using their 21.1.3 version, which incorporates the Linux 5.13 kernel. From there, I've installed the Wayland Compositor, Proton GE 6.16, and all of the different software packages that are required to get Steam and Lutris to run on the device. So what all games are we gonna be throwing at the deck today? Well, I made a bad call in last week's video where I didn't include in the video the Forza Horizon 4 data, so I'm gonna be retesting that at 800p, 1080p, as well as 4K with the medium detail settings. Now there is a YouTuber out there, you might have heard of him, called Linus Tech Tips, and when he got his hands on the Steam Deck in his earlier video, he was able to play Doom Eternal at I think 800p in medium detail settings, and he got to show us that performance metric up at the top right, and I think our Steam Deck matches it pretty well. So I'm really curious how well uh, the Steam Deck will perform at all of the different monitor resolutions today. As for the leaks are concerned over at Reset Era, there's been a couple different games that have been kind of interesting, but the one that caught my interest was Control. They tested it at a couple different uh, internal resolutions as well as different detail settings. So let's see what that happens to do on the deck as well. Now, of course, if you're gonna be playing on the Steam Deck, there's no doubt that you're gonna be playing some indie games, and what better game to do that than Hades? Now, I've heard a lot of y'all talking about how well y'all wanna play these types of games in docked mode, so 4K results are gonna be pretty critical for that type of application. So with that out of the way, let's start off at the native resolution of 800p on our seven inch panel, just like the Steam Deck has, in order to set kind of a baseline. As we go through the charts today, I'm gonna to be cycling through some of the gameplay footage I was able to record with my camera in order to show you guys kind of the graphical difference between the different monitors we're using today, as well as some of the detail and resolution settings we'll be talking about as we go forward. Now at 1280 by 800p, this is the native resolution for the Steam Deck. With control, we're able to get at low detail settings 51.3, which kind of lines up exactly with what was listed on Reset Era. And of course, going over to the medium detail settings, our FPS drops quite a bit and we're able to get just above 30 FPS. Keep in mind, I am using the more traditional benchmark loop of running through the hallway of doom, which is actually a very stressful scene in the game, so you could expect to get additional frame rate when you're playing in different parts of the game. Going into Doom Eternal, we're able to hit 61.7 FPS over my five minute benchmark run, which is actually a promising result. But guys, let's keep in mind, if we put side by side the gameplay from Linus Tech Tips versus what I was able to record, I am able to match Linus's 58 FPS in this exact same spot. So guys, I think we're right on the money. Now going into Forza Horizon 4 at medium detail settings, again, we are above 60 FPS here with a 1% low of 48.9, practically 50 FPS, and that is a very good experience, especially when playing at 800p on this tiny little handheld. Now, if you guys were worried about Hades performance at 800p, guys, if you uncheck the V-Sync option, you're gonna be able to get 467 FPS, clearly more than what's required for the panel, but I do wanna keep that factor on the screen because as we increase our resolutions, I do expect that number to drop significantly. 
Now let's plug the deck into our 21 inch 1080p display. Now I'm not using any USB type C to HDMI adapters here. So there could be some performance loss when going between the different display connections, but I expect it to not be too much. So these numbers should be pretty close. Now control at low detail settings at the native 1080p resolution. We do unfortunately get below 30 FPS, but we are pretty darn close at 27.6 but at medium detail settings, the game just is unplayable. 18.1 is a huge stutter fest. Now, Doom Eternal, it's kind of promising, above 30 FPS, right at 37.6, but those 1% lows are kind of noticeable, so we could use a little bit of help. Forza Horizon 4 is in a better spot than Doom Eternal, able to get right at 43 FPS, and those 1% lows are above 30 FPS as well, so I think Forza doesn't really need additional help, but man, it sure would be nice to get above 60 FPS. <laughs> and again, Hades, we are at 204 FPS, but if we go back to the 800p results, we effectively cut our FPS in half. <laughs> Clearly, 1080p is a tough resolution to drive for our deck. Two of the four games we've tested were able to get just above 30 FPS, but it'd be really nice to get those up to 60 FPS. And there's a huge back catalog of games over on Steam that can use as much graphical horsepower as we can throw at it, such as Control in our case, Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk, any of those more graphically intensive AAA games, Man, they're just not going to be you know, playable on the Steam Deck, especially when it comes to dock mode. So are there any kind of software tools or workarounds we can put in place in order to buy a couple extra frames for our games? But lucky for us, there's one feature that constantly gets left out of the different articles on the internet, and that feature is called GameScope. There's a Valve software developer on the internet that goes by the handle of Plagman, and he's in charge of the GameScope repository over on GitHub. So if you guys wanted to contribute to the project or try it out yourself, definitely go over there and check it out. Now, I'm not gonna be going into the minutia of how the technology works or how to get it set up on your own systems, but if that's something that interests you guys, let me know down in the comments. GameScope's job is to force our games to run at a lower render resolution in order to reduce the graphical load on our system, which hopefully in turn bumps up our frame rates to more playable levels. Then it takes each rendered frame and upscales it up to our target resolution in order to match our display output. Now there are some side effects when it comes to using GameScope, primarily because it uses an integer upscaling approach when going to our target frame rate. Now for our lower resolution panels, that could be a problem because it starts to alias the image quite a bit. But as you'll see as we go through the video, at 1080p and 4K, it's not as big of a problem as we might think. So now, let's take a look at what the performance looks like with GameScope enabled. So when I'm using Doom Eternal at the native 1080p resolution, I am able to hit 37.6 FPS, which is kind of playable, but when I turn on GameScope and use a 50% scaling resolution, man, we are able to get to 86 FPS and our 1% lows are just at 53.1 FPS, which guys is a huge improvement and we could actually dial back our scaling resolution quite a bit to maybe 720p or heck our native 800p and get a pretty good playing experience. Now going into Forza Horizon 4, this is where GameScope does start to trip up a bit. And this is just one of those instances where the tool is just not able to force the render resolution of the game to the target that we're wanting. And unfortunately it upscales it and it looks pretty bad. So we still match our native 42.8 FPS, which isn't great, but hopefully with time, the developers with GameScope can get that improved. Now what's awesome here is with Hades, we're able to buy back all the performance that we lost it from going from 800p to 1080p. So this might be promising when we go to our 4K results. Now control is an interesting use case here because inside of the game, we can actually modify our internal resolution. So that's gonna give us a good comparison of how well a game can upscale an image versus how well GameScope can upscale an image. So at 1080p and using the native internal resolution scaling provided by control, we're able to boost our performance up to 75.1 FPS, which is a solid thumbs up and a win in my book. But guys, GameScope is a much better solution because it is able to get up to 85.8 FPS. And what's more important is that 1% low is above 60 FPS, which is what our panels usually are able to run. So guys, GameScope is very competitive in this regard. Now, when we turn on the medium detail settings, this is where I think we're starting to actually push the limit of the Steam Deck quite a bit. 
but when we turn on the 540p native rendering resolution, we are able to get 44 FPS, and with GameScope, we only buy an additional 3 FPS at 47.3. So if you're wanting to play at medium detail settings, GameScope or the internal resolution is able to get you above 30 FPS, so what exactly happens when we decide to plug in a 4K panel? Now, this might be a stretch for the Steam Deck, but some of you might be plugging this into your work monitor or some other TV or whatever. So let's see how all of these different games perform. So 4K with no upscaling involved, Doom Eternal is a sad time at 13.5 FPS, but if you wanna try and do it on a 4K panel with GameScope enabled, 50% translates to 1080p, and guys, we are actually matching pretty darn close to what we showed in the previous chart with a 35 FPS performance here. Now, Forza Horizon 4 decided to actually work this time, and when we turn on GameScope at 4K using a 1080p render resolution, we are able to get above 38 FPS here, which is a positive result, and hopefully, again, this is in active development, and I hope that the GameScope engineers can kind of figure out the bugs and get it in a good space for whenever the, this releases in fourth quarter. Now, Hades, this is a pretty critical thing. When we run at the native render resolution, we are able to get above 60 FPS, but that 1% low of 31.4, that might be very noticeable to some gamers. So if we engage GameScope and use a 50% scaling resolution, we're able to saturate our display and go at a 168 FPS. So guys, if you are hoping that you could buy back all that additional FPS for your indie games, GameScope is a pretty decent alternative. And going back to control using the different render resolutions at our disposal, none of these games are able to get above 30 FPS, which is kind of disappointing, but this is a pretty good, you know, educational exercise in seeing how the different rendering technologies can actually impact and improve our performance. So all of these results are very promising, but it got me thinking, what happens when we put GameScope onto our seven inch display and run it at 720p? Are we gonna be able to bump our frame rates even further and hopefully get most of our games up to that 60 FPS threshold? Now I am using 720p here because, you know, the math works out just a little bit better and some games don't have internal resolutions lower than 800p for 16 by 10. So here we're gonna be just sticking to 720p. Now with control, when we run at the low detail settings at native resolutions, we are at 81.4 FPS, which is pretty positive. We're able to get above 60 FPS. And when we get to game scope, guys, we are able to surpass that and go to 87.4 FPS. But unfortunately with the medium detail setting, we just don't get that additional FPS. So we are still above 30 FPS, but it's just not that great. But the more promising result here is with Doom Eternal. Again, we're above 60 FPS with the native rendering resolution, but by using GameScope at 720p, we are able to get 86.2 FPS. And again, those 1% lows are just above the panel's refresh rate. So if you turn on dynamic resolution scaling as well, man, this is gonna be a very fluid and very good looking gaming experience. Now, <laughs> Forza Horizon 4, we've had a bit of a struggle bus here. Native resolution, we're above 60 FPS. GameScope, unfortunately, isn't able to actually operate the way it's supposed to. And of course, I didn't include Hades here because again, we're above 500 FPS here. So it's kind of a don't care in this case. There you have it, guys. That's how GameScope's gonna be running on the Steam Deck, and hopefully it shows you just how well the Steam Deck will perform in docked mode. Now, GameScope is in current development, so give those guys some time, and hopefully they work out all the kinks, but it will be able to boost our frame rates up to playable levels, and in docked mode, we might just be able to have a pretty decent time. But again, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you all have a great one. Take care, Turk Force.